In this lecture, we are going to take a closer look at the transient or dynamic behavior of tire forces. In the previous lectures, especially those concerning the brush tire model, we already gained a basic understanding of horizontal tire force transmission and we've also seen that these forces are friction and shear deformation based forces. As an enhancement of these previous considerations, in this lecture we will see that the deformation of a tire has a distinct effect on force transmission that we have not considered yet. Again, we will use simple but effective physical considerations to get a basic insight into the transient behavior of a tire. For example, when we look at the measurement of lateral tire forces on a test trick, as depicted here on the right side, we can see that depending on the tire slip angle, quite large deformations of the whole tire structures occur. Additionally, let's look at the measurement results here on the left side. In this case, the slip angle alpha is changed harmonically within plus and minus 4 degrees at a certain frequency of 1 Hz and a traveling velocity of 60 km per hour. When we look at the measured lateral force with respect to the slip angle at the bottom, we can see a distinct hysteresis behavior. The considerations that we made in the previous lectures are not able to describe such a behavior of the lateral tire forces. Well, let's see if we find a simple explanation and physical description of this behavior. Let's take a look at a simple schematic illustration of this situation on the test trick, here on the left side. We will deal with this illustration throughout the whole lecture. Simplified, the resulting lateral force Fy between tire and road is acting in the middle of the contact patch, which is indicated by point P. The resulting deflection or deformation of the structure Ye leads to an offset of point P and the wheel plane, which means that point P does not coincide with the center of the wheel plane W anymore. One of the fundamental assumptions within the brush tire model was a rigid carcass. The tread elements were considered to be elastic elements. However, as we can see here on the right side, the acting lateral tire forces cause a significant deformation of the tire tread as well as of the carcass or side wall. Especially the deformation of the carcass is hard to neglect in this case. To keep things simple here, we assume pure lateral slip, so no longitudinal slip, which means that the longitudinal velocity of the tire Vx is equal to the rotational speed omega times the effective tire radius Re. Additionally, we assume only small slip values or slip angles. Therefore, we can also assume linear tire force transmission which means that the lateral tire force can be described by the cornering stiffness C alpha times the slip angle alpha. As we already know from previous lectures, a tire shows a viscoelastic deformation behavior. However, to gain basic insight, it's enough to assume pure elastic behavior. And finally, we also neglect inertia effects, which means that we neglect the mass of the tire. As a result, the following considerations are only valid for low frequency and large wavelength motions. Again, let's take a look at the simple schematic illustration here on the right side. As mentioned, until now, we assumed a rigid carcass and assumed that the resulting lateral tire force, Fy, is always acting in the middle plane of the contact patch, which coincides with the wheel point W in the wheel plane. However, due to the dynamic deflection or deformation Ye, the middle of the contact patch shifts. Therefore, the lateral tire force Fy is now acting in a point that deviates from the wheel plane. That point is named P here and describes the middle of the contact patch. At zero slip, P will coincide with W. As we already know, the slip angle in W is given by the lateral sliding velocity in W and the longitudinal velocity. Therefore, the lateral force in W is a function of this slip angle and the cornering stiffness. We call this force steady state tire force, FYS. However, 
The resulting lateral force that is actually acting in P due to the deformation is a function of the slip angle in P. This slip angle is determined by the lateral sliding velocity of P. The resulting lateral force is named dynamic or transient tire force FYD because it is linked to and depends on the dynamic deformation YE. We can see this by looking at the lateral velocity of the point P. It is determined by the lateral velocity of W plus the deformation rate which is described by the derivative of the deflection YE with respect to the time. Or by rearranging we can see that the difference between the sliding velocities of the two points P and W causes the tire to deflect. This is the relevant aspect that we neglected in all of the previous considerations. The sliding velocity is not only a function of wheel kinematics, it is also affected by the tire deformation. The last thing that we need for our description is the deformation force of the carcass. As mentioned before, we assume pure elastic behavior, which means that the tire simply acts like a spring. Therefore, the deformation force is determined by the lateral tire spring stiffness Cy times the dynamic deformation Ye. This means that the resulting transient tire force is also given by this deformation force. Note that the lateral tire stiffness describes the overall stiffness of the structure, so tread plus carcass. Consequently, the force equilibrium in P has to hold. Due to the neglection of inertia effects, there are only two forces acting in P. The friction or contact force between tire and road has to be equal to the deformation force of the carcass. Which means that cornering stiffness times slip angle in point P is equal to lateral spring stiffness times deformation. When we consider the expression of the lateral sliding velocity of point P and rearrange the equation a bit so that we separate the terms depending on Ye from the rest, we find an ordinary first order differential equation of the lateral deformation. This equation describes the dynamic behavior of the tire in lateral direction. We could already work with this expression. However, to find a more convenient version of it, Let's investigate the terms in this equation. We can see that the second term on the left side is the deformation force, which describes the transient tire force. The term on the right side, however, represents the steady state tire force, so the theoretical force acting in W. As we can see, the slip angle in W acts as input or excitation. Next, we take the derivative of the deformation force into account, which is lateral stiffness times deflection rate Ye dot. We finally get an equation describing the dynamics of the force directly instead of the dynamics of the deformation. There the steady state tire force acts as input or excitation, which is described by cornering stiffness and slip angle in the wheel point W. The resulting dynamic tire force, which will actually act on the tire and the rim, can now be determined by solving this ordinary first order differential equation. First, let's take a closer look on the remaining terms in this equation. The first term on the left side is the cornering stiffness divided by the lateral tire stiffness. This term is called relaxation length and often named sigma alpha. Taking also the second term into account, which means division of the relaxation length by the longitudinal velocity, results in the so-called time constant tau y. Therefore, finally, this simple equation for tire force dynamics can be written with the time constant at the beginning. This model is widely known as a simple description of tire force dynamics. Similar considerations can also be made for the longitudinal force transmission. That's it for now. We will continue in a second part.